Hi guys, welcome to Brass Bootcamp. In today's video, I'm going to be going through some of the initial pieces, which is basically the grade before grade one, and also some of the pieces that sort of bridge the gap between the initial grade and grade one. So, the first piece is called Light Up the Fire, which is on the first page uh, in the book, Easy Winners. And basically, in this piece, what we're thinking about is just basically playing all the notes in the right place, making sure our counting is exactly right, and also making sure our tonguing is consistent throughout the whole piece. So I'm going to play, play a bit of the piece, and then I'll talk through what I'm thinking about, and then I'll carry on and explain what else we can do to help you practice this piece. So here we go. This is Light Up the Fire. <laughs> So there I played the first two lines, um, and I was thinking about a few things. First thing was about the phrasing, so every time there's a little tick on the music, that's where we need to breathe. And if you notice, uh, most of the breath marks are between the second and the third beat in our 3-4, three, three beats in the bar time signature. So make sure, if you have a look in the, the fourth bar, so we play the E for two beats, and then we breathe halfway through the bar, and then we carry on on the third beat and carry on the phrase. Um, the whole of the first two lines of this piece only use the notes C, D, E, F, and G, so the first five notes you'll all, you've all been playing for a while. Um, and then on the second line, there's also a pair of quavers in the, the third to last bar on the second line. So we've got D, 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 so one, two, three, and one, for those Ds on the end of the second line. that have got the quavers which are bracketed over. And remember, we count the quavers one and two and three and. Um, so now moving on to the third and fourth lines, this uh, goes up to an A, so make sure you have one and two valves, making sure you're accelerating your, uh, I'm saying a T position for your A's, uh, and also there's a nice little crescendo in bar 17 to help you get uh, up to that high note. So I'll play the rest of the piece, again I'm going to be thinking about where the ticks are, some of them are in between the third beat and the first beat, and some of them are between the second beat and the third beat. So I'm going to play from the last note of the second line through to the rest of the piece. So that's the whole piece. Uh, I made sure my A's were in the right place, I said T on them, made sure I was breathing in the right, right place, and that's pretty much it. Um, if you have a look at the very beginning of the piece, it says smooth and flowing. So the way I'm going to articulate all these uh, notes, instead of going really firmly, I was saying to quite soft, ta, 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 it's a ta, 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 um, to achieve that smooth and flowing style. The next piece on the initial grade is Aurelie, which is on the next uh, next page. So it's Aurelie, Love Me Tender, Elvis Presley sang this song. Um, in this piece, talking through a few things, the phrasing is a lot shorter. There's only two bar phrases in this piece. Um, and looking at your key signature at the very beginning, there's a B flat, which you all know is first valve. So all the Bs are first valve. Uh, and uh, also, there's a nice big repeated strain with the first and second time bars. So you play through until you see your double dotted repeat uh, bar line. Back to the beginning, and then the first time you play the first time bar bracket, and the second time you play the second time bar bracket. Um, so here's a bit of the uh, Love Me Tender with the nice two bar phrases. <laughs> Two phrases. Um, for me, 
I would probably play this um, piece and double up on the phrases. So instead of breathing every two bars, you can try and breathe every four bars. So I'll play the next two phrases, and instead of breathing halfway through, I'll make sure I've took a nice big breath to start with, and I'm going to play two phrases in one breath. So this is from bar five, and I'll double up on the phrasing. <laughs> find obviously doubling up on the phrasing means you've got to play for twice as long in one breath but I also think it actually makes the piece flow a little bit a little bit better so instead of speaking in small musical sentences we're actually speaking in a more flowing fluid way and less breaths uh, helps with the flow of the music so uh, I'm going to carry on from the last bar of the first line and I'm going to carry on doing my four bar phrases and I'm going to play to the uh, repeat mark take a breath and then we go all the way back to the beginning. Uh, make sure bar 10, 11, 12 in bar 13, uh, make sure again that B flat is in first uh, is first valve. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it for this piece. Um, I'm going to go back to the last bar of the first line which is bar 9 and this time I'm going to play and I'm going to take the second time bar. This time have a listen for the nice big crescendo and diminuendo marks on those A's and I'm going to get nice and loud and then come back to a nice medium volume again. So this is bar nine for the second time. Second to last bar, make sure your dotted crotchets, which is one of the rhythms I always talk about. Um, the rhythm in the second to last bar is one, two, three, four, and one. So on your dotted crotchet, you're counting two beats and then moving on the and. So one, two for the two crotchets at the start of the bar. Then the dotted crotchet is on three, four, and then we move on and one. So one, two, three, four, and one. So just before we move on to the next few pieces, uh, just one more uh, note about the phrasing. Um, I would play four bar phrases all the way through. If you're choosing to do four bar phrases, make sure you can play the whole piece with four bar phrases. So make sure you don't start with the first few phrases playing four bars and then you switch and start doing two bar phrases because that just is a little bit disjointed. So um, if you can't manage the whole piece with four bar phrases, then maybe try playing it with two bar phrases all the way through nice and consistently and then keep your breathing nice and relaxed and then practice doing each four bar phrase and then add them together so you can play the whole piece with four bar phrases basically. Very nice. So um, moving on, uh, the next two pieces are sort of bridging the, bridging the gap between uh, grade in the initial grade and grade one. So the first one is Shepherd's Hay which is actually the first piece in the, uh, the book. So you'll notice now there's a lot more quaver notes, uh, quaver rhythms, quaver note durations, um, and uh, there's more intricate articulation markings. So by articulation, I mean whether it's tongue or slurred, so whether you just, whether you say t to start each note, or whether you just blow and move your fingers, that's slurring, or whether it's a mixture of the two. So if you have a look at Shepherd's Hay, the very first piece, um, the articulation pattern that happens in this piece quite a lot is Ta 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 So notice when we've got our four quavers in a row, the first two are slurred and then the second two are tongued. So ta ta ta. Other things in this piece, it's all repeated. So watch out the first line, you need to play it twice, and the second line you need to also play it play it twice as well. 
Um, watch out for the dotted quay, dotted quatchet, sorry, in bar five. Same rhythm as the last bar of Love Me Tender that we've just practiced. So one, two, three, four, and one. So here we go. A bit of shepherd tape. Have a listen out for the articulation. Um, I'll play the whole piece, but I'm not going to do the repeats just to save a little bit of time. Okay, so nice articulation, nice and light and bouncy. Um, apologies for the water on some of those longer notes. And again, nice and uh, lively. It's a sort of traditional sort of folk song, isn't it? So nice and lively, uh, and focus on your articulation. There's no dynamic contrast, just metaphorte or medium loud for the whole piece. Next up, we've got a uh, talus cannon on the next page. So if you have a look at this piece, it looks pretty easy. The rhythm is super easy. Just every single note is a crotchet, so they're all exactly the same. So once you've set your tongue in going, then that's it for the whole piece. You just keep it nice and steady. Every single note is exactly the same. We've got B flat in our key signature and it's meant to forte for the whole piece. So what is this piece sort of testing you out on? What's it sort of trying to teach you? Um, if you have a look, a lot of the notes are much higher. So we've got our higher B flats, first valve again, and we've got our higher Cs. So in general, uh, if you're going up to your higher notes, make sure your tongue is in a nice T position and it's tar for the middle note and tor for the low notes. So if you have a look here, um, most of the first line is middle to high range, so that's tars and tees. And if you have a look on the last line, it does go down to some low Cs, which is a nice open top position. So, nice phrasing. Make sure you breathe where the ticks are again. Uh, and if you notice again, the ticks are between the third and the fourth beat in our 4-4 four, four time signature. The last thing to talk about is where we, do we breathe at the start of this piece? So if you have a look at the very first bar, it's actually only one beat long. Like some of our other pieces, which have an anacrusis bar, which is a bar that doesn't quite fit the time signature at the beginning, this piece uh, is the same thing. The first bar only has one beat, but if you have a look at the last bar, it's got three beats. So the last bar added to the first bar, it all adds up to a nice 4-4. Four, four. So when we start this piece, we're thinking to ourselves, one, two, three, and then we play on beat number four. So if we play on beat number four, we need to breathe on beat number three. So we count in one, two, three. So we, if we breathe one beat before we play, um, then if we play on beat number four, we breathe one beat earlier on beat number three. So here's Talis Cannon. So one, two. <sighs> I played in a nice smooth sort of style. Each note was ta ta ta. It wasn't super smooth, but it was relatively smooth. I made sure it flowed and I took a breath in the right place in between beats number three and beats number four. Um, you could play this piece um, in a more marching style. So I'll play the first few uh, bars in a more marching style. To, so all I'm doing, my breathing stays exactly the same and I'm just changing how I'm saying ta. So instead of going ta ta, I'm saying ta ta. Breathing is exactly the same. So breathing is exactly the same. Um, that time I actually doubled up on the phrases, so I did the first two phrases in one breath rather than uh, splitting them into twos. But again, if you're going to do that, make sure you make the phrase length even for the whole piece. I'll play it one more time. This time, I'm going to play it really, really smooth and make sure I'm saying t as softly as I can. So 
So you can see, without changing my breathing, without changing anything, the only one thing I'm changing is, is how I'm saying ta. So I'm either going ta 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 or ta 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 or ta ta ta. And you can even do, you can make up your own way of playing this piece. So you could sort of do, you could do a hard tongued one and then a soft and hard and soft. Or you could do one bar with hard tonguing or one bar with soft tonguing. Um, and see what effect that has on the piece. Generally, I'd recommend doing uh, the same thing throughout the whole piece or making sure there's an obvious contrast between the two. But if you're going to play this in a concert, you choose one style and play the, play the whole piece through. So, I um, hope you've enjoyed today's video and I'll see you soon.